Hello artists, today we are beginning making our cardboard castles. Let's start by sketching out our idea after looking at images for inspiration. In your sketchbook, start by thinking of the simple shapes you want to make up your castle. You can use bigger or smaller squares or rectangles to make up most of the shapes. You could also add triangles, rhombuses, or other shapes for the roof of a tower or a drawbridge. After you've added your basic shapes, for the bigger areas of the castle, you can start to go back in and add details. I decided to change the straight lines on the top of my wall shapes into a castle line. Remember, a castle line is a pattern. You go over a little, up a little, over a little, down, and then repeat. You can add additional information like windows, doors, stone bricks, flags, and anything else you can think of. Remember, this is just a sketch, so you can keep it pretty simple if you're short on time. If you have extra time, you can add more details while you wait. Now that you have a sketch to guide your making, it's time to get our cardboard and start assembling your castle. Think about the shapes you drew in your sketch, what size squares or rectangles will you start with, and which direction will they go. Will they be horizontal, side to side, or vertical, up and down? You're going to have to overlap the pieces, so some cardboard can go behind your biggest shape, and some can go on top. We need to overlap these pieces so that we can glue it all together later. Before you glue anything down, mark where you want to have the castle lines. The castle lines along the top of your wall shapes need to be cut first before you glue. You can draw them out if you want to with a pencil or a marker as a guide. When you're ready to cut your castle lines, here's a good strategy. Using your scissors, make a little snip on either side of the castle line cutout shape. Then bend that piece backward. Now you can fit your scissors along the back of that shape and snip it all the way off. If it didn't cut down far enough, like my example here, no problem. Just go ahead and repeat the steps, snipping on either side a little further down this time. Make sure you save these little pieces for later. They make excellent stone shapes for details. Go ahead and finish cutting out all the castle line shapes that you would like. Eventually, when you get the hang of it, you probably won't even need to draw the lines anymore. You can just cut out the shapes as you go. Now, if you cut something by accident that you don't really like, remember to be determined. We never give up, we persevere and problem solve. If I make some beautiful oopses with my cutting, what is a strategy I could do to problem solve? Rather than starting over completely, could I remove the mistake by trimming it down further? Could I reuse that mistake cardboard for a different piece, like maybe a window detail or something else? Now that I'm done cutting my castle lines, I can reassemble my cardboard and get ready to glue my pieces down. Here's a strategy to try before you glue. Grab a pencil or a marker and trace the areas where your cardboard overlaps. You may need to do this in layers or stages. Just take it one piece at a time. Trace or draw along the edge of the cardboard. Now you know that this is where you're going to want to glue. This is where the boards are overlapping, where they're touching, and where the glue needs to go. Try to place the glue not too close to the edge of the border so that it doesn't ooze out too much. Press the boards together firmly and then move on to the next piece to trace. After you trace the edges of the next piece, you will again see clearly where you need to put the glue. Now you can start to move on to other shapes like the roof of a tower or maybe a door. Make sure to measure out the shapes first so that they are the right size. If you make a beautiful oops and cut something too small, you can problem solve by seeing how else you can use the two small pieces like these triangles that I cut too small. I ended up moving them further down the towers and cut off the sharp corners to make them more rounded. Now I can reuse these shapes as windows. I can also slow down and measure my cardboard by placing it where I want to go before I cut it out. That way I can see right off if it's too short or too wide and I can make decisions from there. You can also draw out the shape before you cut with pencil or marker first. This is a very smart strategy and will save you time by making sure that the shapes are the right size. You can always make something smaller by trimming it down 
but it's really hard to make a shape bigger with cardboard. If you cut out a shape and you need another one the exact same size, you can trace the shape that you cut out and then you will have two identical shapes. This is especially helpful if your castle has some symmetry. Use your marker or pencil to cut out whatever other shapes you would like to include. Once you have all the big shapes taken care of, you can spend some time cutting out and adding details. This could be window sills below your windows, details on the door, maybe a door frame, and stone shapes for the walls. Have fun with it and remember that you won't need to finish all of this in a single class. If you need to, um, or if you do finish early, it would be best to see if friends around you need help. More hands make less work and will help move us along to the painting stage faster. Okay, good luck artists. Have fun and when you're done, make sure to place your name on your artwork and put it on the drying rack. If you didn't get the chance to glue down everything, just make sure to write your name on all the different pieces, place them together on the drying rack. Can't wait to see what you create.